Hi there, I'm Carolyn Rosé from Carnegie Mellon University. I'm an associate professor with a joint appointment between the Language Technologies Institute and the Human Computer Interaction Institute. And my research in computer supported collaborative learning focuses a lot on modeling conversational interactions between students in learning contexts and being able to use those models to understand what it is about conversation that makes it valuable for learning and then using those technologies we design interventions that are able to support learning in online settings. I'm very excited to have the opportunity to share with you at least a taste of this research so that you can see if it's something that you'd like to pursue further. So you can get your feet wet this in this couple of weeks and a little bit familiar with what there is in this area. Um, I will give you some pointers to things that you can dig deeper into and I hope that some of you will decide that this is an exciting area you want to go further in and that you'll meet others along the same path who you can join forces with and to continue to work with as you move forward uh, in, in your involvement in this area. So in this introductory lecture I just want to give you kind of an overview of what to expect from the unit as a whole. My goal for you is that you'll gain exposure to some research issues in the area of text mining. That's sort of broadly an area of language technologies where techniques are developed to be able to get into big collections of text and find meaningful patterns in those and to have the opportunity to more efficiently find those parts of the data that are worth spending more time on to reason through and to understand. I will be introducing you to a tool bench that was developed in my lab at Carnegie Mellon University called Lightside. It's freely available for download and use for research purposes and you'll have the opportunity in this unit to just get started with some of the functionality that it offers. And I will give you some pointers to additional resources that you can take with you beyond the scope of this course. So here's something uh, that I sh share almost in every introductory lecture that I give, whether it's in my courses at Carnegie Mellon University or in tutorials and workshops that I'm involved in more broadly in the community. I like to remind people that machine learning isn't magic. It's not going to do your job for you, but it can be a useful tool for helping to identify meaningful patterns in data when it's used properly. But what does that mean? What does it mean to use machine learning properly? Well, I would argue that it requires insight into your data, that it's not going to be able to give you a meaningful view into your data unless you help it in some substantial way. The way that you will help machine learning algorithms to be able to help you see pat patterns in your data is by representing the data in terms of features that make those patterns pop, pop out. And so it takes a little bit of playing around in data before before that really makes sense. In Ryan Baker's unit, he talked a bit about this as well. Um, so in my unit, I'm really carrying on from what he started to introduce you to, but to focus specifically on what does that mean for text. But this picture that I'm offering you now is really very general across areas of machine learning. If you look, you'll see a bowl of M&M candies at the bottom of the screen here. And if you look at those candies, you uh, can reflect on how easy it would be to dump that bowl out and to divide those candies into piles according to color. Even your small child uh, could do that for you. But imagine if you first bleached those candies white. And now you sat down, you in your professional self, highly educated, highly skilled, but with those white candies, would you, in your sophistication, be able to divide those candies back into their original color uh, piles? Probably not. No matter how sophisticated you are, no matter how sophisticated your, the technique that you adopt, you wouldn't be able to do that. And I would argue that sometimes when people apply machine learning in a naive way without thinking deeply about the features that they first extract from their raw data before they begin the machine learning process, that in effect 
they are bleaching their candy white because they're removing the important information from the data that would enable the models to identify meaningful patterns. And so it's very, very important in our work in all areas of machine learning and analytics and data mining, whatever you want to call it, to think deeply about those representational issues. Now, by the end of this unit, you will still feel like you don't have enough insight into language per se and its structures and all of its intricacies to really do that effectively. And you should not feel impatient with yourself uh, for that. In fact, um, if you get to the end of the unit and you don't feel that, then I will have failed to convey to you how rich and deep and intricate language really is, how beautiful the structure of language really is, if you can even just start to appreciate that and to understand that there's a whole literature out there from the fields of linguistics and even social psychology and anthropology and other fields of social sciences, you'll be starting on your path towards a deeper appreciation of that structure and a way of being able to approach language data that's more effective and more meaningful for you. So let's start to talk about how you can look at your data and start to get a sense of what features you would want to extract. You can see here on the screen in front of you an Excel file with two columns, and this is the simplest um, structure uh, for data to be get started on text mining, but I do want to point out that you would need to save this as a CSV file, that's a comma separated value file, in order to load it into LightSide, which is the tool bench we'll be playing with. Okay, that's just a side comment, but for now, let's look at this file. Um, it could as easily be an Excel file or a CSV, and you see there's the two columns. One of them is called code. That's where the um, categorization of the text is stored, and the second column is called text, and that's where the raw text is, and the idea here is it's preparation for a model that would be able to look at a text and decide, is it a question or is it a statement? Now. Uh, you cannot really just apply the machine learning algorithms that, you know, uh, are offered through typical tool benches like RapidMiner that uh, Ryan Baker talked about or, uh, you know, Weka, which is a, a downloadable resource, or LightSight that we will learn how to use in this unit. Um, those algorithms, they don't uh, operate on text in its raw form. First, uh, you have to extract features from those texts. And LightSide offers you tools to be able to do that. So you, you would load it into, in this format. But before you actually apply a machine learning algorithm, you'll need to extract some features. So now you can look at these texts yourself and see what do you think distinguishes those that are categorized as questions and those that are categorized as statements. And if you look at them, you can notice several things. One of them is that punctuation is usually considered a good predictor of a distinction between questions and statements. But in this data, you can see that sometimes it gives you a good indication, and other times it gives you a misleading indication. It may be that sometimes punctuation is missing, and other times the punctuation that you expect to be associated with the code is not associated with that code. You can also see that in general, that the statements are I-focused, whereas the questions are you-focused. But that gives us a useful, correct indicator in some of these cases, but not others. And here's another example. WH words, they tend to mark questions. And you can see here that many times question words are reliable indicators of a question versus a statement. But there are times when those question words show up, and they show up as relativizing pronouns, in which case they don't mark a question. In fact, they just mark a multi-clausal uh, statement. Okay, so you can see that, uh, you know, they're features that you can extract from text, they tend to be kind of noisy indicators of the categories that you want to use. But you will want to have a lot of these noisy indicators, and the hope is that in getting lots of them together, you can do a good job of 
being able to distinguish those cases that, you know, in this case were questions versus statements because you have a lot of different ways of looking at the same problem and ways of kind of combining evidence in order to make a useful prediction. Now, I want to point you to an important resource for being able to get to know what are some of the kinds of features that LightSide makes easy to extract from text. There's a user's manual that comes along with it, and it's really a must read. I would suggest that you go ahead and, uh, if you haven't already, download LightSide. You can see on the resources page for this class where all of the software is. Go ahead and install it, and when you open up the, the folder, you'll see in there the LightSide manual, and you should go ahead and at least skim through to get to know um, how to set it up, uh, what is the functionality that it offers you, and because we won't be able to get through all of it in this course, but at least then you'll have some sense of what's there and where to find help. There are lots of tutorials that you can walk through step by step, and you might really find that the best learning takes place when you just sit down, you and that user's manual, um, going through step by step as it points you where to click and what you should see. Um, but you'll have the opportunity to hear some lectures and to do some assignments and talk with some fellow students. And the hope is that through all these paths that you will gain some experience and uh, familiarity and comfort with using this kind of technology by the end. If you haven't already been exposed to this excellent resource, I would highly recommend this um, data mining book that you can see here on your slide. I use it in my applied machine learning class at Carnegie Mellon every semester, and I think it's excellent. I really wish it was around when I was first learning about machine learning. Um, I, what I really like about it is that it gives you a conceptual foundation for all of the algorithms and more that we'll talk about in this class, and really in enough depth that you can really use it effectively and with good pointers to uh, making the next step. And so my suggestion to you, if you decide to go forward with work from this class or specifically from this unit, that this book would be a great uh, place to uh, step into. And then beyond that, there are some other books that you can get. Many of these uh, that you'll see, the O'Reilly and Associates books, many of them you can download as PDFs off the web for free. And they come with great resources, code that you can play around with and uh, you know, often you can find hints and resources additional to them on the web, on their own website, but also on Stack Overflow. Really, um, there's a lot out there to support you as you move forward. Let me just close with a little bit of an overview of this two-week unit. In the first week, we will have some discussion of basic research issues. We'll have really a brief overview of tools and techniques. There'll be a very simple hands-on activity and a research highlight where you'll get to see some of the research going on now uh, using text mining in the context of understanding online learning. And then to close off this first week, there will be a discussion activity in which you'll get to interact with others in this course and share some of your thoughts. Then the second week of this unit will give you a little bit more in-depth instruction on working with textual data. Uh, you'll see about how to extract a variety of different kinds of text features using LightSide. You'll get more hands-on work building and evaluating text classification models. And you'll learn how to do some comparison of alternative feature space designs. So I'm looking forward to working with you during this unit, and I hope you're looking forward to it too. Please um, feel free to send some email to the address that you see on this slide. Uh, but really what I'd like to encourage you to do is use your fellow students as resources. Use that Quick Helper button. Um, engage in those chat exercises. Be active on the discussion forums, because I think that you can really gain a lot from your interaction with the other students in this course.